Yeah, um, thank you for the introduction, Maxi. Uh, I want to talk about a feature called Mixed DOF Handler today. Um, maybe some of you have heard about that. Maybe a quick show of hands who knows what Mixed DOF Handler is or was. Okay, not so many actually. Um, so then it's cool that I can tell you a little bit about it. And this is about offering support for so-called mixed or hybrid grids and also for fields on subdomains. So I'm gonna start by introducing what that means at all. Um, I give a bit of a history overview because I thought that was cool. Um, and then I will mainly give you a walkthrough for how to construct such problems. Um, talk a bit about the design decisions we made for the new API and round up with some examples. Um, so if we start out with our Farad logo here, then it just has triangular elements, but um, as it's just a grid, I can play with it. And for the sake of this talk, I introduced some quadrilaterals here in this left purple grain. And then this mesh has both triangular and quadrilateral elements. That's quite a common thing if you want to use, uh, for instance, a quadrilateral mesh on a more real world geometry. Um, so that's the part about mixed or hybrid grids. Um, if they have different element types, it doesn't have to be this setup. It could be really any element types that are compatible. Um, and the second part that I want to talk about today is what if I want to introduce a field on just a part of the, sub of the domain? So let's say I have this as a polycrystal. I want a displacement field everywhere. But let's say this green center grain should be incompressible, and I want to use a displacement pressure split to tackle that. That would mean I need a pressure field, but I only really need that on the green grain in the center. Um, OK, let's go to the history then, uh, because all of this has actually been possible to do with ferrite ever since August 2019, uh, when something called mixed DOF handler was introduced. Um, and we quite quickly got some improvements to that. Uh, the state at this point is that we have DOF handler that is there to distribute degrees of freedom, but it cannot do mixed grids or fields on subdomains. It is, however, pretty performant and pretty nicely written. And then we have mixed DOF handler, which is in a very experimental state. It can do these uh, fields on subdomains and mixed grids, but it, it has some caveats. It doesn't really support the same syntax, and we don't really know about performance. <laughs> um, I really want to highlight this PR from Elias when we were very fresh PhD students, both of us in early 2020, because this was the very first step to thinking that, well, maybe actually it's a bit annoying to have two different data structures that can both distribute degrees of freedom. They do very similar things. They have a lot of code duplication. Like we should really only have one of them. Um, and in this PR, Elias introduced the same syntax that we had for uh, grids with a single element type for mixed grids as well. So I see this as the first step to uh, making them only one DOF handler. However, you were also very confident about not having any loss in the performance. And we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. Um, we both kept using mixed DOF handler for about two years and uh, it, it worked pretty well, but it was also a very hidden feature in the code base. So at some point I thought, oh, there are already some doc strings. Let's just add them to the docs. Um, and another year passed by until we started seriously tackling this problem of, well, we have two dot handlers and that's annoying. We really want to reduce the code that we need for degree of freedom distribution. Uh, one problem that we had with mixed DOF handler was that for some performance reason and things like querying coordinates of a cell, it kept its own grid representation. So that's sort of ugly, right? We already have a grid representation. We couldn't just throw that away, but then we kept a sort of duplicate in the mixed DOF handler. Uh, it was solving some performance problems, but we didn't really like that. And uh, up to this PR, there were a number of PRs that solved these performance problems in a different way so that we wouldn't need the grid representation anymore. Uh, at that point, we thought, great, like we solved the biggest problem with mixed DOF handler, and now let's just go ahead and delete the DOF handler file. But um, maybe let's have a quick look at, oh, this is really blurry. Uh, let's have a quick look at how mixed DOF handler, it doesn't really matter what's on the table, actually performs against DOF handler. And there was this tracking issue that tried to like list all the things that were um, affected by how the DOF distribution and querying was actually implemented. It was not quite as green from the beginning. So uh, we did a lot of PRs. <laughs> 
a number of us. So this is, uh, there's a lot of PRs from Frederick in here as well. Um, and then in April this year, we actually deleted one of the DOF handlers. So those of you who are using the master branch hopefully didn't even notice that the DOF handler implementation completely changed under the hood because this is supposed to be a non-breaking PR for DOF handler users. But ever since, the data structure that's called DOF handler can do mixed scripts and fields on subdomains. I'm also a little bit sad that I used up this PR 666 for some minor change before the DOF handler merge. Uh, there was one thing left with uh, subdomains, and that was the syntax to actually construct uh, fields on subdomains and mixed grid problems. Because up to this PR, the focus was very much on how can we improve mixed DOF handler so that it's on par with the old DOF handler. For, for the problems that most of us are solving. But we also wanted nice syntax for constructing more complex text problems. And um, that's what I want to focus on today. What is this new syntax? What does it look like? But to start that, let's go back to the regular triangular grid. For those of you who are not terribly familiar with Parite, uh, what I do here is I'm loading the grid. Then I'm defining a few helpers. So I want a linear interpolation on my triangles. Uh, I define an interpolation and a quadrature rule, which then together constructs the cell values object. That's what I would really look at as the element definition. It says which uh, polynomials am I going to use, which quadrature rule. Um, and then I construct a DOF handler. I just add a displacement field to it here and distribute the dots. So that's the basic structure. And now we're going to vary that a little bit. So if I have a mixed grid, then I do want different Lagrange polynomials. Maybe I want different integration points as well. Uh, so I need to set up two different ones of these. So here I have one for the quadrilaterals that gets full integration with two times two quadrature points. And then I have uh, CST triangles with one integration point. Uh, and in the end here, I gather both of them in a tuple. Uh, so that's the element definitions. Uh, now I need to define my actual subdomains to say, where do I want to use which definitions? And there are a couple of rules for defining subdomains. These have actually not changed ever since we started in 2019 with mixed off handlers. So all elements in a subdomain must be of the same type. Um, and each cell can belong to one and only one subdomain. So we have to have disjoint cell sets between these different subdoff handlers. And the third one actually follows from the second one. Um, if I have several fields on an element, then I uh, need to add all of them in the same subdomain. So let's keep that in mind. Um, and start with uh, loading a grid again. Um, this time I'm loading the script with the quadrilaterals in it. Uh, and since I can figure out how to export that from GMesh, um, I'm filtering myself for which ones are triangles and which ones are quadrilaterals. And then I start the DOF distribution. Um, I'm going to showcase this for the problem where I also want the pressure field just in the center, just for the sake of showing how the syntax works. So I start by creating a DOF handler, everything the same as for a usual problem. And then I need to uh, define subdomains. So a subdomain is defined by a so-called sub-DOF handler because it's a DOF handler that acts only on part of the domain. Um, and I have to handle a cell set. So in this case, that's these highlighted purple cells. These are all of the same cell type, and they're also the first cells in my DOF handler, so they don't uh, overlap with any other ones. Then I can go add a field. This is the purple subdomain just with the displacement field, so I add a vector value displacement field. And then I go on to the next subdomain, which is the center grain. Since I wanted to get an extra field, it has to be its own subdomain, so I define that via the subdof handler. These are all triangles, and they don't overlap with my quadrilaterals. And then I add the displacement field and also the pressure field to that. Then I'm done with this subdomain. And I only have the last one left, which is sort of all the. Um, okay. it, it doesn't seem to like the microphones, but uh, I guess I'll just go on. Yes. 
So I make sure that it's a disjoint cell sets with my other triangles here uh, and construct the third subdomain. I add the displacement field. And then in the end, like for a regular DOF handler, I close it so that it can go through the whole DOF distribution algorithm. Um, so now that you know the syntax, uh, I want to mention a couple of things why I thought this was a good syntax. Some of you might remember that we had a couple of discussions about the syntax. This was definitely not the only choice that was possible to implement. So one thing that I thought it should have is it should be similar to the old DOF handler syntax that has been around for many years now. So here on the left, we see how we would add a single field to a regular DOF handler. And on the right, we have a single subdomain to a sub DOF handler. And you can see that they're almost the same apart from the fact that I need to define the subdomain. So I think that's very nice because it goes well in line with the syntax that most of you probably already know. And the other thing that I thought was very important is to get good informative error messages. Um, in, in the old mixed DOF handler, there was something called a field handler and it didn't really know about anything else, which meant that many times when you were not obeying one of these rules that I presented in the previous slides for how you should construct domains, you would get an error message a few lines down and you wouldn't really understand where it comes from. Um, with this new syntax, we always have the information at hand that we need. So if, if for instance, I construct a subdomain that overlaps with another subdomain, I'm going to be told right away that these cell sets are not disjoint and I did something wrong right in this line. Or there's actually a whole bunch of these error messages. So if I try to add a quadrilateral interpolation to a triangular element, it's going to scream at me and say, well, this will not work. And I think it's a lot nicer to get that um, right when you're constructing it, especially when you're constructing complex problems that can get a bit lengthy in all the things that you need to take care of. Um, yeah, time to come to some examples then. Um, I have two examples. One of them is on a mixed grid, but uh, without any type of extra fields because they're really separate problems. Like there is no reason you should uh, need to have an overlap between them. So it's separate examples here. Um, your assembly does need to look a little bit different compared to a regular assembly. So your regular assembly would probably be more like the second function here. So. We start by allocating the element matrices, then we iterate over all the cells, call an element routine that fill up the local, fills up the local matrices, and then we assemble into the global system. Um, and now we have to do that for each subdomain because I have these uh, cell values that are called CV here, and they're particular to either the triangular or the quadrilateral elements. So what I do in this top function is I just look over the combinations of the sub -dof handlers and the corresponding cell values, and I call this inner function. Now, there are many ways how you could design this code. It used to be quite performance sensitive that you would design it in a good way because it's really easy to run into uh, something called type instabilities here because cell values have a different type for different element types. So they have this reference shape in their type signature, and that used to be a bit tricky. I actually did try to uh, reproduce that performance hit for this talk, and I had to realize modern computer architectures are pretty cool. And this isn't as sensitive anymore as it used to be a couple of years ago, but it's still nice to write a good type stable code. So that's why I introduced the second function here, where we have a separate function that goes per sub handler because when we go in here, we know the type of the cell values. So we only get one dynamic dispatch uh, per subdomain and not one per cell, but then the computer does handle the thing with one dispatch per cell pretty fairly well. At least my computer did when I tried to benchmark this. Um, yeah, that's that. You can come up with different architecture for this code and it's probably gonna be fine as well. Um, then I have a second example, the one where I made the central grain incompressible, but now it's all triangles. Um, this one looks a bit more interesting on the von Mises dresses. This is probably not the most scientific representation I've ever made, but uh, it, it's pretty. So we can see that we get varying von Mises dresses with a bit higher stresses here and here, and a bit lower here and here. 
And if you look really carefully, you can also see that the right edge isn't straight anymore. Um, I keep these examples in a GitHub repository. So under uh, Kim out FairRightCon 2023, you can check out the code. I think that's maybe a bit nicer than uh, throwing all of it in a presentation. Yeah, and uh, with that, I like to appreciate the software I use. No big surprises here, but I made all these plots with Mark here. Um, this is where you can find the code for this presentation and uh, you can reach out to me on GitHub or Slack or via email or at the hackathon. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Okay. When you're generating the grid, you will have the uh, the mesh generated the output of these elements set so that you have the output kind of Yeah, I guess I'm pretty sure you could probably output that off the mesh generator as well, but it's pretty easy to filter that in Julia too. Any other question? Seems not to be the case. Oh. Yeah, Dennis. <laughs> so, any idea on how we might or the user automate the step of um, putting the name into like triangles for the network so they have less experience when using like these scripts without actual subdomain? I think that's very much about the abstraction level. Like one of the focuses of Ferrite, especially in the early times, has been that you have to be explicit about everything you want. Like you have to decide the entire interpolation. You don't just say, I want a CST element. You say, I want this interpolation and I can have a different geometric interpolation and I can have this quadrature rule on it. So if you want to stick to deciding all these things yourself, that means you do have to construct the things yourself for like a triangle or quadrilateral. But of course, it would be fairly easy to write an abstraction layer that just lets you generate cell values with a linear Lagrange interpolation for whatever reference shapes you're going to encounter in the domain. So I think it's more of a design question of how explicit do you need to be and how much boilerplate code are we going to keep in ferrite. I think that's like, it's an interesting discussion there, but it's totally possible to write abstraction layers that just let you say, I want to run on whatever element type is in my grid. I agree that the user experience for a specific case of a mixed grid could be a bit more pleasant, but then as soon as you add actual subdomains, you do want to decide about uh, what is the partitioning in there. Right. Then let's thank Kim once again.